Hey, it's Karina Reichman, and you are listening to Comes a Time with O'Teal Burbridge and Mike Fenoya. If you're digging the podcast, do these guys a favor and review and subscribe. It means a lot. Be sure to follow the pod on social media, YouTube, and if you're joining for bonus episodes and exclusive content, go to patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod and get on the bus. And now, here's Mike and O'Teal. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Comes a Time podcast. That right there is the great one and only O'Teal Burbridge. And that right there is the inimitable... Mike Fenoya. Hi, pal. Doing, Bubba? I miss you, buddy. Same here, man. We've been ships passing in the night these days. Well, you know, when you got an album coming out and a tour and a special. And a, and a, and a solo band and uh, a tour and children. Whew, we've been people. busy, but it's good stuff. We've been making hay, man. Putting we it have. down. We have. And... Uh, We've got a great episode today, and we've got a lot of great ones coming up. So, uh, folks, today we have uh, First Man and Steve D'Angelo. Uh, Otil, this is our first episode that ever started with a prayer. Eric, let us know. I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's cool. First Man is such a cool – he's like – there's probably going to be a movie about him one day. He's like a movie character. Yeah. This guy from Jamaica that lives, I guess, in like this eco utopia <laughs> where they grow, you know, they have, uh, they've been able to grow, I think, cannabis and stuff because of their, like, you can do it under like freedom of religion or something like that, you know? I believe so. Yeah. But now they're actually getting to do mushrooms which is not something they're used to in that culture but um it's been really cool the story of how they've put their thing together and opened it up to the locals who are not used to like dosing or right. micro dosing or whatever you know and and so uh but not having it be like only for like rich tourists that come from out of town right to get the therapy like local people get to yeah have the therapy too so it's really cool and and steve d'angelo of course is we've had his brother on the podcast in the past but the last prisoner project is uh was he the founder of it was steve the one that put it together well i think steve was such a cannabis activist from way back right you know so he's he's kind of one of the four one of those forefathers of the whole thing you know yeah and uh but now he is getting into the more of the psychedelic side of it too um not graduate school before but you know as yeah. far as like going to jamaica and doing it is a new thing yeah yeah and i think eric correct me if i'm wrong but this may be our first international episode too because every other episode i think our guests were uh in the same country at least yeah maybe not the same planet avi Loeb and <laughs> stanley Kripner. but uh i think this may have been our first guest from from another another land which is kind of neat so any of you international people that want to join us on the pod first man was the first man from another country to uh join us so now nah, this was super cool and what they're doing over there is amazing and uh his his vibe I'll tell you, we really are doing a pretty amazing thing with connecting at a level over Zoom. That's yeah. hard to do. And these folks, like, I don't know, it's wild. And even just you could tell where they're at. And it's a it's a very visually uh, intriguing episode. So I hope you guys that are listening can go over to our YouTube channel and watch it. I don't that? know what that was. Sounded like one. That sounded like me. I think we should leave it in, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was well, folks. Cool. Yeah. And listen, if you are uh, listening and you want to watch, go over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash at comes a time podcast. Uh, we put clips up there all the time. Uh, we're going to be doing some live stuff from a certain thing that may be happening soon. 
wink, wink. So get over there and get ready and hit the notifications. While you're over at YouTube, follow O'Teal's page to check out all of the great videos from the amazing album, O'Teal. And I want to tell you, I don't know if you know this, but Dead, uh, the good old Grateful Dead cast, right? They have, we, we've had them on. We love that. I love that podcast, but they're going through Wake of the Flood's 50th anniversary. Yeah. And they did an episode on Stella Blue. And they went through like all the different, like, you know, iterations and things like that. And they ended the podcast with other covers of Stella Blue and they played yours from the album. They played a little piece nice. and it was really awesome to like cap the episode. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that they're shouting awesome. you out over there. And uh, they've been so supportive, man. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, everybody can see video of uh, the making of on your youtube channel yeah and then while you're over there on november 9th my special don't let me down is out and uh you guys can subscribe please hit subscribe and uh click it on the day it comes out because that's literally now i guess the thing that matters until it, that changes um you can find my live dates at mikefinoya.com you can join us at patreon.com forward slash comes a time pod for bonus episodes and bonus content each week we have merch we have great new merch oh, yeah um so yeah there's all types of cool shit happening over here on the bus so uh join us won't you yes um we want to give thanks you know for this moment for all our relations, all our connections with life, with the universe. We want to ask and that all, you know, all these entities of harmony be drawn into this conversation so it can be productive. It can give uh, what, it, what the aim of it is set out to do. We want to ask all the great spirits to just guide our, our reasoning so someone can learn from this. And, you know, that we can just give thanks for each step that we make to creating a better and more harmonious planet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I like starting like that. That's fantastic. How are you? Let's talk first. Uh, where, where are you? You look uh, happy and full of life. <laughs> Yes, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm in Jamaica. I'm in Rastafari Indigenous Village, uh, which is a, a very interesting space uh, within human experience that I've been created to, you know, um, share with people about this community, who we are, what we represent as a product of the human experience. So, you know, yes, this is where I'm at at, at the moment, the rest of our indigenous village in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Montego. That is beautiful. And how, how did you connect with Mr. D'Angelo, this fine gentleman? Well, it's all about power, you know. Uh, this is how I connected with you. I, I, you know, there, 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 people choose certain path in life. And Steve and I and yourselves have chosen, you know, the path of, of plants. And as a result of that, in seeing these entities, everyone who is on this path, we're going to interact with, you know. And um, touching base, when you get on this path, sometimes people are on there for so many different reasons, you know. People are on there because of money that they think they can make. People are on there because of healing that they can have. People are on there because they want to protect something. You know, we are there for the protection, the preservation, and the promotion of a cultural context. And that's why Steve and myself has been connected because we see the culture of the, of these experiences with plants to be the, the best container 
for having the conversation about plants and about all these other entities like, you know, fungi and so on. So that, that's the main reason why I, I connected to Steve on that level of the journey. Can you talk about the plants? Because you mentioned fungi, you know, and we think Jamaica, obviously, we're going to think cannabis. So what are the other plants? Well, it's, it's more Rastafari indigenous village. You know, in all honesty, Ganja has been the door for the world. It has really broke down so much of these conversations to allow other entities to be able to come through. And as a result of that, I know that in places like Negril, you know, for a very, very long time, you would find, um, you would find mushrooms in the grill, you know, just ages ago. People have sort of found, and mainly that came through the hippie culture. You know, in, in a way, hippie and Rastafari sort of connected in that part of the island. Liberation, freedom, you know, um, not, not conformist, but creative type of people. So in that part of the island, it's the freest part of the island, and that's where a lot of the mushroom culture existed in the 60s and so on. Now, um, ever since what is now called the psychedelic movement, we got connected to this culture through the shamans of South America. And now we're looking at the shamans of the world, but our introduction was through those shamans of South America. And once we connected to it, and we felt the energy of these special entities. It was just a natural alignment and connection for any spiritual person to connect to it. So even though Rastafari Indigenous Village is probably one of the first Rastafari group in Jamaica that has really connected to the teachings of these plants, you know, and of these entities, it is still something that is happening you know, day by day in the local communities, because we as Rastafari Indigenous Village has taken up this responsibility, put it that way, to educate people about them as there's so much, I, I don't know what to call it, but there's almost like an invasion of people coming to Jamaica now to be healed by these, by these plant medicines, you know, be it ayahuasca, be it San Pedro, be it whatever it is. And, you know, we have to take some responsibility because we have been sharing this, these plants along with many other people that have been coming into Jamaica, but we don't know about them. They are all like overseas people choosing a resort to do it. But we are yeah. home based. <laughs> we are culturally, you know, in, in planted in this space and we are the ones taking it as locals to other locals so yeah it's just a new day have you gotten a good response from the locals that's a very good question um you know these plants and these entities mushrooms and so on they open a lot of gates you know, they open a lot of gates and these gates require a management, you know. So in some cases, I would all say because everything has been a lesson, it has been good, you know. But in the higher percentage, it has all been positive. But you know, when there's a one bad apple, it can spoil the whole bunch. And I, I would not right. even call it a bad apple, but yeah. some of the experiences have been challenging and they force us to then go further into the communities to see, you know, because when you get it through the shamans, um, some of the shamans, not all of them, when you get it through some of the shamans, it's a direct relationship between yourself and the medicine. But the cultural container that it is held in, in the Amazon, is completely different from what the Western world is experiencing. Western yeah. world wants money, you know. Western wa world wants healing from the problems that they have put themselves in. It's a different container and different context in the in 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 the cultural environment. So it took us a time to sort of 
learn a little bit about that, you know, how people should deal with their Western world concerns, you know. Um, yeah. So we encourage people a lot to go to their therapists, try and deal with the human issues in a different way. And when you come to our space, it's about expanding you into the cultural issue. How do you connect to the waters? How do you connect to the skies? How do you connect mm. to the earth? How do you deeper impose yourself into the real reality than the man-made reality? So, yeah. you know, it, it, it has been a way how to build that bridge. And I think that with the retreats that we offer now, we have sort of found a way how to build that bridge and, and testing it, you know, but it, it's always learning, man. It's always learning and yeah. sharing. Because the, the the world is so beautiful. Yeah, and that's that's extremely important what you had said because um, you know speaking from personal experience, I used psychedelics just as like a party favor, you know, sort of carelessly as a child, You're not a child, but teenager and early twenties and whatnot, and then into my like thirties and specifically forties, it's always been with intention, and it's always been with um, you know, hoping to achieve some sense of relief or peace. And I knew that the work that I had to do was going to be, you know, I had to buckle up and get ready for a bumpy ride. It's not always, you know, rainbows and, uh, unicorns. Sometimes it's a mudslide or a, <laughs> a hurricane and you got, and you got to be ready for it. And I think that's perfect. What you had said, because while you're explaining that I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who, you know, an like American who heard it's heard from a friend at yoga class, like, Oh, I went and did this retreat. It's great. You're going to love it. Go do it. And they don't work out their stuff or do the right preparation to, you know, before the ceremony and they're left disjointed. And then the anxiety starts that they're not home and so on and so forth. And like, I think that's really important to kind of like, uh, you know, when you pack for a trip, you kind of want to make sure, what are you packing? Are you packing stuff you need or are you packing stuff that should stay home? So we got to do that up here too. I feel there, there is another issue. There is also the issue of when you come into a beautiful place like this and you have this very peaceful relationship with yourself and with, and with people, you know, but then you don't have that at home, you know, and when you go home, what you're now experiencing is, you know, everything that made you want to heal, but then yeah. you go straight back to that. How do you integrate then? So the pre yeah. and post is, is very important. You know, people go back and they want to feel that peace that they got there. And sometimes they then start to think it's not real. That kind of a peace, you know. And this is why yeah. it's very, very important to create the cultural container and also allow people to know about their own container. You know what I mean? You know, because some, the plants did not create these issues, they were created by human beings. And as a result of that, you know, human beings has created scientific approach in how to solve their own problems. So there has to be this kind of a mix, you know, because you live in an apartment building, you can't just come to a retreat and then move out of an apartment building. You know? Yes, yes, that's right. And you have terrible <laughs> people at work. All they want to do is to be your boss, make more money, you can't just go back to work and change these things, you know? So it has to be a process and a process that is clearly communicated and your, your toolbox box is packed, not just for what you're going to come and experience, but also what you're going to do after you leave the experience. Yeah. I feel like, um, <laughs> my natural inclination would be like, yeah, this apartment sucks. This job sucks. This whole city sucks. I think I'm going to move to Jamaica for a little while until I get strong enough to go back and do the <laughs> and reintegrate <laughs> into the crappy situation again. You know? I think about that so <laughs> much that now there's like ayahuasca, like retreats and mushroom ceremonies in like Brooklyn. And you got to like take the subway there and take the subway home. And it's like, what? Like the last thing I want to do is 
get an elevator after a nice mushroom trip and then, you know, horns honking and people, you know, <laughs> no, thank you. I think I would crumble into a million pieces. It's set and setting. That's so important. Oh, man. You know? Well, that, that, especially if it helps ever. us. I, setting is everything is right. That's, I hope it helps us get back to nature. You know, that what you said about like, you know, deal with all the, the stuff of this whole construct that we've agreed to, which is not healthy long term. And that's why we have all these problems. But then, you know, come to like, let these plants like reconnect you with nature, with the water, with, you know, the jungle or whatever. I feel like a lot of that nature can just recalibrate you by yourself. If you could just take a sabbatical from this whole thing, um, especially in Jamaica. No, it does. It does. And, you know, um, integration is a challenge. It's a challenge, you know, in this work. It's a, it's a big challenge. Mainly because yes. people are having it also as a work, you know. So you come, you meet us, then you go next customer, you know. So we try our best not to do that. We try our best to really see, you know, we call people to a family. We call people to a relationship. This is done yeah. in, our, in, in our homes, you know. In, when you come to Rastafari Indigenous Village, you're coming to a place where people really do live. Our children are here, you know. Um, and there's so much ne negatives and positive that can come in that if we are not properly prepared, especially with respect, you know, for yeah. each other, you yeah, know, so absolutely. respect is a good level of preparation when you decide to go to the indigenous communities, you know, and to have that vibration, um, with them, you know, but there is a way how we have to replicate it. Go ahead, Mike. How, lo sorry. how long does a visitor uh, normally stay when they come to visit the village for uh, these ceremonies? So our ceremonies are normally like a five-day retreat now that we have structured it. It's like a five-day retreat that, that, that we have. Um, and they, so they, they come in on a Sunday and then they leave on the Friday. In all honesty, they never leave, you know? It's, right. it, it's this ongoing relationship that we have, you know, just looking at spiritual modalities that exist across the planet. That's, that's, that's what we are doing. Rastafari, we are lost people. We are people who have been taken away from our story. We're people who are looking at decolonizing our minds, right? And once we decolonize our minds, we realize that we need to decolonize the environment that our mind lives in. And as a result, you know, the, the most, the most, what we would say, impactful thing about this day, which is the oldest day on the planet, <laughs> and we are here, this is the oldest moment in time, and we are here having this conversation, is that all of the world and, 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 and its possibilities, its methodologies are available to us for healing right now. With be it from China to Europe, it is available to us, to Africa, everywhere. What is dangerous about it is that as we grow, we normally grow, say, in Egypt. That's one civilization. And we, we took that to the max. We went into Mexico, all over the world. We grew. But now human beings have literally conquered the planet. We have conquered the air. We have conquered the sea. So now as we grow, there's a possibility that as these kingdoms fall, the entire this is the first time the entire earth may fall based on our development. That's a very serious time. So when we bring people together, we bring people together to explore. What is it that you know? We don't bring people together to say they are sick. We bring people together that they are a unique experience of this environment. Be whatever you think your trauma is. You have information that we need to evolve. And together we search for those information, wherever it is. High blood pressure. Is it, is it, is it Japan? 
that has the deal? Is it in your backyard, wherever it is? So everyone who comes to our space is an expert. They are not sick. They're an environmental issue. And they are an expert on that issue. And we share what that issue is. And we create a container that all of us can be aware, which is the first step of you. It's a, it's a, so we remain a family. Yeah, sure. It, it's this very unique experience um, when you go to Rastafari Indigenous Village. Um, the first time that I visited, you know, by the time I was halfway into the village, I had tears streaming down my face because I was in a community that I could see was already living by the lessons that, that the plants teach us. And so when folks immerse and, and stay at the village for, for five days, um, they're in an environment where there's you know, beautiful medicinal herb gardens, uh, where there's a hundred different herbs that are being grown and, and Nyerere and Queen Eye, uh, other healers uh, have the knowledge of, of how to use those, those herbs and teach people how to identify them and pick them and make them into tinctures or balms or soaps. Likewise, a beautiful regenerative um, uh, cannabis and food garden uh, where all the plants are grown in relationship with each other, um, uh, where each plant does something beneficial for, for another, nurtures it or keeps predators away. Um, Rastafari traditions are, are just through, through the village. The, um, there's a drum making studio where King uh, Toto uh, preserves some of the most ancient drum making techniques on, on the planet. Um, and, uh, and then drummers uh, who, uh, who teach these, these techniques that have been passed down from Africa. So it's this immersive experience um, where, you know, unlike most of, of the retreats that folks have to choose from in Jamaica that take place in pretty fancy resorts and, uh, have yoga instructors and uh, wellness classes and therapists and are very therapeutically oriented. Uh, the retreats at Rastafari Indigenous Village are more experiential. It's more uh, being immersed in the lifestyle. And so um, not everything is perfect and manicured, uh, but everything is is real and straight from the heart. You know, when you uh, go to like a another country sometimes they they tell you so that you can be respectful of what you were talking about before uh they teach you some things to not do so that you don't you know accidentally really offend another culture that you're not used to what what are some things we should know as like your typical joe american coming to rastafari village to not you know besides just don't be a jerk, typical American. <laughs> well, listen, you know, we just had a young lady came here, what was it, probably two weeks ago. I hope she don't listen to this podcast because I told her it was over. <laughs> she apologized and everything. <laughs> but man, she, I, I went into the refrigerator and she came in late the night and everything. And she brought, she, she had had some chicken outside. This is 15 years. That's the first time chicken has ever been brought into our property like that. And she brought the chicken in and yeah, we don't eat meat. Okay. So we, we are not uh -huh. a meat eating culture. We, uh -huh. we live by the plants, you know, so that's, that's very, very important for us. Um, 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 meat eating. We do offer a few days out of the retreat when people can go into the town. Even though this retreat and the for best absorption of the medicine, you know, me eating needs a little break, you know, for yeah. that. But yes, this is something that is very, very important to us. It's a, it's a family orientated space, you know, um, and uh, that 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 re requires some respect. There is an interpretation of family um, for us, which is mother, father, and child. So that's 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 an important um, thing as well. We do not smoke cigarettes. You know, not chemicalized version of tobacco. 
You know, right. so in all honesty, you know, we, we do use tobacco a lot, you know, as, as, as a sacred plant within our ceremonies and so on, you know, be it in Hape, be it in the straight tobacco itself, you know, um, there's no alcohol, um, in our space either, you know, um, we do a fermented, uh, brew that we prepare. And we feed to people, for example, we take foods like nonis and we make them into shots, you know, with a lot of pepper and so on. And people can use that to clean their system, you know, which may contain some level of alcohol, but not alcohol, whiskey, rums, so on and right. so forth. You will not necessarily find in our space. Yeah. And, and we see eldership. We see the importance of elders. So in our space, our elders are very, very um, respected, you know, so we ask before, you know, we do anything. And yeah, those are some of the things. I don't know if there's anything, Steve, um, because I, I like what Steve did a while ago as someone who, who is not Rastafari, but came in and had the experience. It's nice to see it through his eyes as well. And I think there might be a few things that Steve was probably slapped on his hands about. It's like when he didn't remember all the things right now, but yeah, but those are some of the main ones. Is there anything you can remember, Steve? So um yeah, you know, the I I I um I have spent a lot of time and lived for a while at Rastafari Indigenous Village, but I'm not Rastafari, I'm a hippie. And there's a lot of uh, similarities between hippie culture and Rastafari culture. But there's some differences too, and I think that um, that uh, touching on the on the family nature of Rastafari, you know, for us hippies, um, we we had this saying: "Don't trust anybody over 30. Uh, we we didn't have respect for our elders; we had contempt for our elders because they had created this world that that we didn't want to live in anymore. Uh, we were the first generation of of people who thought our way. Um, and we were very much about, you know, claiming freedom in all of its forms. So hippies like to get together and take off all of their clothes and dance in the sunshine together. Well, that's not something that you're going to see in a Rastafari community. Uh, Rastafari uh, has much more a sense of, of modesty. And, um, you know, it's it's not unusual to see hippies making out um, or, or even doing a little bit more than making out in public. And you, you won't see that kind of public display of intimate affection in a Rastafari community. Um, so there's there's ways that are different. Hippies will um, set up a loud uh, electrical rock and roll stage and, and party from the time the sun goes down until the time the sun goes up. Rastafari are more respectful of the of the rhythms of nature and uh, and and tend to go to bed with nature and wake up with nature. Uh, so there's there's many of these differences, but at the core, the value system is really the same. The value system is about respect for love and peace and nature, and and really radical inclusion. Um, Rastafari talks about and practices one love. And so even though there's these bits of cultural differences, I think the fact that both hippies and Rastafari had conversations with, with the same kinds of plants, we learned many of the same lessons out of those experiences and developed this, this common value system. And so uh, we mesh with each other uh, well, um, it's it's just a question of understanding our differences, and you know, whenever you go visiting in somebody else's house, uh, respecting respecting their ways and vice versa. It also sounds like one of the major similarities is a curiosity and an and an and an openness of like, teach me what you know. It's not that because I said so, American, uh, you know. Our our experience with elders might be a little different than, you know, we had kind of a, I'm scared of things I don't know. So just it's what I know and that's it. Don't question it as a child or as a, you know, and I love what, what I heard about, like, you know, everyone's an expert and you're bringing your expertise to the, to the table and you're writing the book of 
the next experience and the next experience and the person who will come to the village afterwards. I think that's really great. And it also lends to the experience for the person that's visiting the village. If you know that you're respected and you know that you're like held in reverence, you're going to go into your experience with a little bit more gusto and a little bit more, you know, maybe self-acceptance um, and, and, and the ability to maybe go further. That's so important. Well, you know, we're not, we, 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 we don't think of ourselves as creating an attraction for tourists to come and experience. We think more about inviting uh, pilgrims uh, who have a shared value system to commune with us and, and be together with us in this sacred space. How did you find out about this family, Steve, and how did you come to become a part of it? Well, I, um, for, for about 15 years, I spent uh, most of my time and energy in California running a, what then was the world's largest medical cannabis dispensary. And the federal government uh, worked very, very hard to close us down. So for those years, I was unable to travel. I was just locked in battle. Um, in 2018, the, the federal government surrendered. Um, they stopped prosecuting us. The state of California legalized cannabis. And I decided that it was time to travel around the world and see what we had started in California you know, back in 1996, even earlier than that, uh, how it had spread around the world. So I, I spent more than 250 days uh, of that year on the road um, touring emerging cannabis economies. And that took me to Jamaica. I was speaking at a pretty corporate kind of cannabis conference there. Um, and there were lots of um, uh, booths and stands with kind of corporate looking imagery on it. But in a corner of the hall, there were these amazing, striking murals that were displayed of Rastafari art that had pictures of ganja and Rastafari families and gardens. And, um, and I was just immediately drawn to it because I could tell it was real authentic cannabis culture. So I made a beeline over there to those murals. And that's where I met uh, Auntie Arlene, who was one of the original founders of the village. And she carried me the next day over to the village. Um, uh, you have to sometimes, depending on how the water is, walk across a river to get into the village. And so she led me across the, the, the river. Um, wow. I kind of think of it as crossing the River Jordan. And, um, yeah. and, and I ended up at, at Rastafari Indigenous Village. And uh, um, like I said, I just was immediately moved in a really deep way because I've, you know, I've, I've been a cannabis activist my whole life and never before had I seen a community that so faithfully had incorporated the lessons that this plant teaches us into their, into their way of life. I just love that it was the artwork that drew you that, that the two things I heard that struck me and I was like, this is why I'm so glad they're, they're on this podcast. When you said radical inclusion, you know, that's something no matter and so many people are anti-religious, but in any religion, if I hear that those particular people have that orientation, I know that's the track that I want to study that religion on. The one of, you know, radical inclusion, because we are all the same. We're all in this together. And the, and the second being the artwork, because it does stick out. Like when you're in a really corporate environment, you know, and then you're like, oh, the art just like it's it's like big flowers out in the middle of, you know, a mall or something, <laughs> you know, it's like that's such a cool thing that it just happened organically and spiritually like that. The, the artwork drew you and then you met Auntie. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, I didn't know who this Steve D'Angelo was. I just know that people were making a big deal. You know, Steve D'Angelo is in your tent. You know that, okay. He probably yeah. wants to do an interview because at the time Steve was doing a few podcasts. You know, and I, I was organizing an event which was taking everything out of me to organize. I'm like, man, these people want to do podcasts and so on. I had no clue who this damn man was. You know? And then, you know, we, 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 we got an opportunity to sit down and speak and, um, yeah, that's where we met each other from. 
a place where, you know, it was not about a cannabis activist. It was not about a man who was running the biggest dispensary in the world. It wasn't about that. It was just about values, you know. Yeah. It was just about how yeah. do we see um, the world, you know. But just a quick thing to go back to your conversation of the, of the expert. A friend of mine was having a problem, you know, and yeah. she sent um, her child here with us and, and, and the child stayed here for two months. And when that child, we said to, said to him, listen, man, insta- he, he was expecting us to teach, you know, him things. And we all would gather and say, well, you're an addict. What is that like? You know? We started to explain, you know, the things that he had to go through as an addict. And then he said, he, you know, so he said he would go into rehab. And like, what is that like? You know, and he told us about going into rehab. And, you know, after telling us all of these things, we realized, he started to realize that he was an expert. He was able to break <laughs> yeah. down all the AA program. I was like, they're wishing that all the people who run the AA program could hear this from this young man. Yeah. And he was just talking yeah. about what worked, what didn't work, how it how it didn't help him, how it helped him, you know, and everything that was coming up was up. Uh, uh. And then he taught us about jail food. <laughs> the different yeah. types of uh, uh, recipes that you can do in jail. <laughs> and wow. maybe, like, we started to incorporate a few of them, you know, in our lives as well, you know. So I was saying, I was saying all of this to say that you know, depending on the eye that you that we use to look at each other. I, I mean, come on, man! Mushroom comes from shit. How yep. can we still have hierarchy <laughs> in our mentality? You know. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm just so saying true. that to say we are all experts. Yes, I love that, and and. I think that's so I've gone through a couple of sessions with mushrooms one-on-one with someone who sat and made sure that I was okay. And you know, all of that. And I've had such beautiful experiences with it because of her, you know, because she gave me the opportunity to figure it out. And, you know, it wasn't about her. It wasn't about me. It was about it. It was about the experience, you know? And then I talked to other folks that have had the exact opposite experience where they're going through it and someone's telling them to put on a VR headset and, you know, they're changing the music and it it was all just too much, you know? And, and mine was like near a river and it was all about the river and it just became like the river became the, became the main character, you know, not on purpose. It just, we were open to it. And when you have someone who respects you and, you know, Ken Kesey said, uh, he believed that every man has it in him to be, he has the right to be the biggest man that he has in him, you know, and the world is maybe sometimes trying to keep you small. So when you have the opportunity in the setting to grow and be the biggest you know, spiritual thing being you could be, the possibilities are endless, you know? And, and I imagine some of the experiences and the realizations that you witness must be so rewarding and so powerful. It's a decolonizing technique. It's a decolonizing technique. Globalization yeah. was built on imposition. It was not built on creating a container for us to sit together to see if we wanted to be together. Right. And that's the idea. You know, I hear you speak about the one-on-one, you know, and that's great. And I, I, anyone who can, who that's how you want to do it, you should have the experience. What we try to do here is to create a community that, that represents I would love. one. To show... Yeah. Yeah, to, to show that <coughs> you are absolutely no different from me. And if you are different, you're just a compliment to me. You know? Yeah, yes. And that we really yes. do need each other in in all of this process. And and now what is happening 
It's like in the groups that we set up, the people are not necessarily even calling us after the retreat for advice. You know, like the last retreat we had, there was a well-accomplished woman there. She has accomplished a lot in life and she's married and she's so on. Then there was a younger couple and they were having their <coughs> issues and so on. And that was what was happening. She is getting the phone calls about what can be the deal and everybody's <laughs> connecting together, recognizing each other as an expert in their area of business. You know, she was there and she was telling them the best way how to invest is to invest in something that is purposeful for humanity. They always last. Those are the better yeah. ones. They are slow, but they are more sustainable and they always last. And then she gave examples. So here, people are learning about business from the heart. <laughs> They're learning about connecting yeah. with each other from the heart. They're learning about food, music, from everything that we live today could be from the heart. And that's what that's that's yes. what we're realizing, that we could really build an environment instead of the colonial approach that was just about power, we could really build it about love and it would still work. Yeah. Yeah, and then you'd realize, oh wow, I'm not depressed anymore. Like I because you're connected. It's the lack of connection that just leaves. It's like if you disconnect a piece of fruit from the vine, it's going to shrivel up, right? If you don't eat it, it's going to die. And once you get that connection, it's just like it. Uh, it's, and, and, and a community that's built on that model, that's not toxic, that's not taken, that's built to nourish. You know? So, yeah, it's, 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 it's all of these uh, my experiences we're talking about are part of the spectrum of the psychedelic experience, right? And, and, and putting on the eye shades and going inside and doing the internal work is really valuable and important. But it's also there comes a time when you want to take the eye shades off and look into each other's eyes and think about, yeah. you know, yeah. our connections to each other, human beings to human beings. And then to take a look at the at the natural world and 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 think about what our relation is to the natural world, um, uh, and then look at the man made world, our social structures that that we've built, and look at that through the psychedelic lens. You know, my personal belief is that Mother Nature gifted us with these plants, and there's hundreds of them all over the world. Um, she wanted to make sure we could always get to them. For a very important purpose, right? Um, they allow us to step outside of our normal thinking and our normal reality and take a look at our own selves and our own actions and ask ourselves whether or not what we are doing is really in alignment with the innermost yearnings of our hearts. And if they're not, if there's a sense of, of misalignment, then gives us the insight and, and the inspiration to bring ourselves back in, into alignment. And so the, the, all of the parts of, of, of the experience are, are important to do that, looking inwards, looking at each other, looking at the natural world, and looking at, at, at the world that we've built. And um, all of these things are, are linked together. Sometimes you just need to step aside from this. Uh, I heard someone say recently on a podcast, you know, we have to distinguish between the world and the planet. Now, a lot of this is semantics, but what he meant is the planet is actual reality. What is here? The world is what we agreed upon. So what we agree to participate in, in a lot of times, not even knowing the roots of it, because we're just born in the time and place we're born and then we're taught by our parents, you can't do this. You can't do that. You can't, you know? Yeah. And so we don't even know. And then when like the first time that I used cannabis and certainly the first time that I did psychedelics, the world was just erased. You know? <laughs> and it's like, and then now I can see, well, how do I feel about the real world? And it would just like, it brought it to the top. I was like, I don't like that. And I don't like this. And God, I don't want to do that for my whole life, you know? And so I rebelled yeah. and went towards music. But if I hadn't had that 
construct that we agreed to erased on the chalkboard to then find out what is it that I want to put on the chalkboard? You know, it's so many people never even get to that point of just like erasing the chalkboard. And it's yeah, not well, that plants are the only that, way to do that, but you know. Well, and also because a lot of people great. were never taught that there's an eraser. Exactly. <laughs> or if they see the eraser and they go, that's bad. And we'll send you to jail for that eraser. And you'll go crazy if you pick up that eraser and yeah. bad, 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 bad. You know, like, yeah. Well, you yeah, know, I mean, there's, you know, been what you've just get... described. What? There's yeah, you have just described all back. our interpretation. Sorry, Sorry, go ahead, Steve. I didn't hear that. So. No. Well, there's been this but. idea that change is that change is bad, right? And and there's a reason that this idea has been promulgated because there's people yes. who have created structures of power um, that, that allow them to run the world, and and so of course they are resisting change. And so for us, you know, when we think about integrating the the psychedelic experience, we don't really want folks to go back to the world that wounded them and everybody yes. else and fit more seamlessly back into that world. Yeah. We want to empower them and inspire them and connect them so that they can go back and change that world so yep. that it stops wounding all of us. Or leave it. <laughs> if you can't get everybody, because that's but, the decolonization part. Like, you know, if you can get it up here, if you, it's like Clinton, free your mind and your ass will follow. Right. Yeah, exactly. But you know what you have just described, um, Motil, you have just described what we call a high. A high is where you get, it's not about eating all the food you bought for two months in two hours, yes? A high <laughs> is this panoramic view of yourself where you're able to erase and put in place what you would want because now you can see that that's our yeah. interpretation of a high that you get the opportunity to, to, to interact with what we call God's eye. Yes. So they, yeah. they always tell you that God is above. Yes. And it's maybe because that concept of above is really that view where you can see that the same person who killed is loved. Yes. Yeah. And the same person who loves you then kills. You know what I mean? So it's it's being able to see that equal parts and to give space in that kind of a part. And 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 that's that's so so important to be able. And you know, this is where the name first man comes from. Everything that you just described is why I call myself first man. I got to erase up and I erase every damn thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> and then I went, I went, I went into, I went, it's like I went into a store and I went for shopping. Okay. I'll take a little bit of love here, a little bit of hatred and I fill this bottle. And that's what first man is. My that's own great. curation along with the connection of what my ancestors gave me, you know, and, 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 and this is why our retreat is like that. Our retreat is about what is the issue with the world today? It's conformity. Everyone is structured mm -hmm. to be what someone else wanted them to be. So the exactly. suppression of yeah. ego yeah. biggest issue. And if we can release that, if we can pull that valve and allow people to erase, yes, responsibly though, responsibly, because I've seen a lot yes. of erasing that 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 let someone think I should not have been married. I should not have all these children. And they so 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 you know this this is why it's very important uh, to create a container. The the pre work is so important. Right now, I try my best not to give people medicine like that or share with them these 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 important entities without allowing them to see the responsibility before they go in. You know, yeah. that if they're yeah. even, because yeah. people actually think that lack of awareness, you know, makes them not responsible when they become aware, you know? 
So they started yeah. a lot of things <laughs> and they have a lot of things that they were doing. And now that they are aware, they just want to run away and leave it. And they create more problems um, like that, you know. So it's very, very important for people yeah. to know who you are, but also to take responsibility for when you didn't know who you are, because that's still you. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Because you shouldn't he- er- erase your kids. <laughs> you know? well, I remember hearing <laughs> early on, I remember hearing uh, ego meant edging God out. And it's interesting because it's mm. like, you know, everything you're mentioning is like, you know, when you have that feeling of, yeah. you know, God and you have that feeling of love and all of that, the ego is not there to ruin it. I had a moment and I've said it a million times and I'll say it a million times again. It's like become a, I think my like mantra, I had a great ex- like realization when I was on a, like a large mushroom trip that there's only love and fear. And if you're operating from fear, you're not open to the love around you. But when you're operating from love, fear doesn't stand a chance. And it was that simple and that quick. And it helped me compartmentalize everything I was going through that seemed so huge. And it came down to what it actually really the size. And I was able to go, okay, I'm looking at this from love. I'm looking at this from fear. I'm looking at this from love. And it made me realize like all of these things. And it was just because I was able to you know, like we said a couple of weeks ago to like blow the dust off the mirror. Right. And like, yeah. you know, would wipe the chalkboard clean. Now there's all this space to redo those exactly. formulas, you know, it's so important. It's the only time segregation yeah. is good. <laughs> <You're> just <laughs> fear, love, fear, just like, That's you it. know, <laughs> prioritize, get rid That's of it. this, pull yeah. this in, push that out, you know, Please come back and hang with us again. Thank you guys yeah. so much. Really yeah, appreciate I'll be, it. I'll be there. I will be there. I promise. Yeah. All right. Dude, yeah. comes we, a time. Go, goes to Rasta Village. Yes. And I will leave all of my meat at the door. I promise. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. <laughs>